In this video, let's look at what is Matryoshka embedding models. So what is embedding model in general? So if you are, you know, if your data is in the form of say audio, text or videos, right? You could have an audio embedding model. You could have a text embedding model. You could have a video embedding model. So the audio embedding model does audio vector embeddings. The text, uh, you know, model does text vector embeddings and video vector embeddings are generated by the video embedding model. So this audio vector embeddings or this embedding is nothing but a representation of this audio data, right? Similarly, text vector embeddings are a representation of text data over here. Okay. Like that your video vector embeddings is a representation of the video data. Now, how is this data represented? Okay. So this data is represented in the form of a vector. Okay. You are embedding basically any embeddings for that matter is represented of a vector of say D dimensions. Okay. Right. So I have an example over here. If you go over here. Okay. Uh, this talks about mat matryoshka embedding model, but otherwise also, if there is this sentence called it is so sunny outside, you can represent this with an embedding of dimension, say 1024 like this. And each, uh, you know, value in this vector is a floating point value, which would be like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and things like that. Okay. So this embedding actually represents this sentence. Okay. So what exactly happens over here? So when this e embedding model, Okay, represents in this D dimensions. Your this D dimensions could be something like 1024, it could be even more 2048, right? It could be 512, right? Different dimension. Now each dimension is represented by a floating point value, like say 0.1, something, some floating point values. Okay. Now this floating point values requires four bytes to store. Okay. So when your dimension size increases, you require more memory to store your vectors. Okay. Now, what if there is a technique by which, okay, you have say a 1024 dimension vector, which is learned. Okay. Here, take the example of text embeddings, but this could be also for image or video or audio or any of these things. Okay. But you can truncate this dimensions from 1024 into smaller vectors like, you know, 512 dimensions, 256, 128, 64, while still, you know, maintaining the learned representations in the data. Okay. So what are these vectors used for? These vectors are used for representing the data. And then you can actually do some kind of, you know, uh, search in data, you can do a similarity, finding similarity in data, right? So if you have a set of documents represent each represented by a vector like this, right? Then you can do something like cosine similarity to find out which two documents are similar to each other. Okay. Now, what if you have embeddings like this, right? Where the original embedding is of size 1024 dimensions, but then if you were to truncate it into smaller sizes, okay, this 512 dimension is actually a subset of this 1024 right? You truncate it to 512, okay, dimension. It still is able to, you know, nicely represent this document in search operations or, you know, when you are doing cosine similarity or anything like that, right? It is still, it is able to represent this document very well. That means that your search results or cosine similarity results are not affected, okay, by this truncation process. Now, a way of learning this truncation process is something known as Matryoshka embedding model. Okay. So when you are actually learning embeddings from data during training in Matryoshka, uh, you know, by this process, Matryoshka representation learning, what happens is that uh, you are learning embedding such that, okay, when even if you take subset of this embeddings, okay, um, say for example, this original embedding is 1024 dimension, but you are taking, you know, truncated embeddings like of various sizes like 5, 12, 256, 128, it is still able to represent data very well. Okay. So that is the idea of your Matryoshka embedding models. Okay. Now, where did this term come from? It came from this Matryoshka dolls. Okay. So where you have these different sizes of dolls. Okay. But all these dolls would fit into this bigger doll. Okay. So this each doll, this doll would fit into this one. 
right this smaller doll would fit into this one this one right similarly like this right so as the size increases these all these smaller dolls fit into this bigger doll okay so that is the idea over here in this matryoshka embedding model okay so during training process what happens is that uh, you know uh, uh, how it works is that your original loss which you compute you compute for the largest dimension right when you are training for cross entropy losses what is used for training your embeddings okay so the only change which is done over here is that you actually take the loss for each of these smaller dimensions also sum it up and then take the average loss when training your embedding model that is your matryoshka loss okay so you take cross entropy loss for each of the smaller dimensions okay so when you are taking the smaller dimension what what happens over here okay so here there is 2048 dimensions so if you have 2048 you take subsets of it like you know 8 16 dimensions okay uh, then you take say 32 dimensions 128 and so on okay depending upon the representations you want okay so basically it takes subset of this 2048 bit vector uh, so for uh, for eight dimension vector okay it takes subsets of that now compute the cross entropy for each of these subsets okay and take the average of that that is your matryoshka loss so by this simple modification this actually forces the model the embedding model to learn the dolls that are valid and useful representation basically learn the useful representations at these various dimensions that is the idea okay what would this mean this would mean that you are free to use whichever you know representation whichever smaller representation you want over here okay for example you could use the uh, 64 bit uh, representation not 64 bit sorry 64 dimension representation of the vector you can maybe use 128 and you can check if that is providing you sufficient accuracy in terms of your search retrieval and all those things if it uh, you know works well then you can actually go for this 128 dimension instead of say the full 1024 dimension this would effectively save you memory for storing your representations okay now uh, there could be the case where actually when you are doing the smaller representation you might lose some accuracy then what you do what you can do is that with the smaller representation you can say uh, you know do some kind of re-ranking so with the smaller representation you can shortlist say top 100 documents okay then you can take for the same documents you can take the highest representation or say some intermediate higher representation and do re-ranking in this way you can do adaptive retrieval okay so this is about matryoshka embedding model okay using this matryoshka representation learning you can actually um, you have you can actually uh, train embeddings okay now you uh, the key idea over here is that uh, if the embedding is of d uh, dimension okay you will also have representations at much smaller dimensions which are uh, you know much smaller than d that is the idea so you can have a much smaller representation at say d by 16 d by 8 d by 4 d by 2 okay that is the key idea over here okay so you have these particular uh, you know uh, articles which talks about uh, matryoshka learn, uh, uh, embedding models okay so this is from hugging face so here they talk about what are embeddings um, that is what i explained and then uh, this truncation uh, truncation of your matryoshka embedding model from that embedding you can truncate it into smaller representation and uh, you know you can produce useful embeddings of various dimensions they explain the concept of this matryoshka doll ideally okay and then they talk about the shortlisting and re-ranking and what are the trade-offs so matryoshka models will allow you to scale your embedding model solutions to your desired storage cost processing speed and performance and you have this matryoshka models you can train in sentence transformers so that is the code which they have explained over here okay how you can add those matryoshka losses and uh, how you can train over here that is what is shown over here you can also do inference with uh, you know uh, matryoshka embedding models that is what uh, they have explained over here using sentence transformers right how you can do inference using matryoshka embeddings so you can look at this particular article for that okay 
now for a more uh, detailed uh, you know understanding of what is this matryoshka representation and what is this learning i would suggest you to look at this particular uh, blog okay about matryoshka uh, representation learning right now why did this whole thing uh, suddenly became a rage okay so this suddenly became a rage when open ai uh, said that they are making use of matryoshka learning to provide you embeddings of various dimensions while still maintaining quality okay so from that this started picking up and uh, you know uh, now there is this uh, i think there is this another embedding called nomic uh, they also actually provide you with uh, you know matryoshka model whereby you can have embedding uh, embeddings of different dimensions okay so i would suggest that you look at uh, you know to get a more detailed understanding you look at this particular blog page okay written by one of the authors of this particular uh, matryoshka representation learning so this is the basic paper which talks about uh, matryoshka representation learning and one of the authors is aniket uh, uh, reje so aniket reje so he is the person who's actually written this particular um, Um, blog on matryoshka representation learning from the ground up i would suggest that you look at this particular page to get a deeper understanding of this particular uh, representation learning for generating embeddings i hope this video is useful to you if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel i'll be putting these links in the description of the video do check it out see you in another video